And these idiots here still aren't. Oh, hey, they killed a halberdier! Nice work. <laughs> Seriously, they're just gonna like bounce off of them for the remaining like 13 minutes or whatever. Oh, they just killed another one! All right, welcome back to the war. And what a war we have to get onto, because of course, as you can see, the dwarves of Erebor are attacking us. Now this is my fault, and it was deliberate in, to some degree. So we had Gizlik just sitting here on the bridge, basically trying to tempt the dwarves into attacking him, but they weren't doing that. In fact, they were just clustering more and more around the settlement. So what I had Gizlik do is just kind of step off of the bridge and stand just close enough that one of their armies could attack us, just in the hope that they would. And indeed they have. So that's great. Um, this is also the turn after the couple of battles we fought here with what was formerly Ulysil's army. As you can see, there are troops coming from various quarters. But, uh, you know, we'll talk about the campaign map, I think, after the battle, especially since I don't think... I don't think it's actually swung, swung around to the elves' turn yet, and I assume that we'll want to talk about whatever it is they do as well. So we'll save the campaign map stuff until after the battle is over. So the battle we have here is against a large group of miners. They've got four units of warsmiths, a catapult, and three, let's call them more elite dwarven units. No generals. Gizlik's army is basically... They basically haven't fought a battle. They took, see, I think it was Grasgard, and I think that was it. That's the only battle that they fought. Oh, and I, they killed a rebel group while they were coming up here, like, many, many turns ago. So, Gizlik is very much untested, but this is a good battle for him, I think, or at least I hope. See, what I'm hoping is, is we can get our scout cavalry to take out the catapult. We can get our chariots to get in amongst the warsmiths and prevent them from throwing their axes. We have nice armor-piercing units in the form of the Warblades, as well as just elite heavy infantry in the form of the Red Dragons. Plus, of course, our catapults and archers who can fire into the miners. So I, I am a little nervous, because I'm always nervous when fighting large dwarven armies, because they do just seem to be able to do a lot of damage, but hopefully we'll be able to chop, chop, chop our way right through them. So let's get right down onto the battle map. All right, welcome to the battle. All right, the dwarves are doing something over there. I'm not sure if they're splitting off their forces to go for my different units, because you see I have my chariots up here on this hill. I have my scout cavalry way over here on this side, and then I have the vast majority of my troops here, which they're arranged in a single line, War blades on the left and on the right with the war dragons in the center, plus Gizlik behind the left flank here. I've made them into one long line and kind of stretched their units more than is my standard, simply because I'm trying to prevent them from using their superior numbers to just sort of swing around us, which they tend to do quite a bit. Or at least make it harder for them to do that. My units are much larger than theirs, and so I think I should just try and use that to my advantage. It looks like they are truly just splitting up their forces here. Sending some to go after the chariots, while sending some to go after the cavalry by the look of it. And then sending a bunch over to the center here. So we are dividing up their forces, which is kind of nice. I'm going to charge my scout cavalry down here, though, to see if we can maybe shoot the catapults. That would be nice. Yes, we'll open fire on those guys as soon as we are able to. I might even just... Here, all right, don't fire it well. We don't want them to shoot at them. Though, they do have skirmishers who are just kind of watching what we're doing over here, so I'm not sure that we actually want to get into a kind of, like, a skirmisher duel with them. Units. 
In fact, what we might do is just kind of charge in if they turn around and start shooting at us. Here, we'll put you guys in skirmisher and then just tell them to straight up fire on those guys. Fifteen, thirteen, and nine. Units. Where's the edge of the map? It's over here. Okay. Units. Actually, you know what? Get back over here. Units, Actually, charge those guys since they're getting a little too close. Units. Okay. Those guys are dead. Get over here. Oh, skirmisher mode. Um, turn off. Get over here. They fire on the vanguards, please. Basically, we're going to charge the chariots into them. Just to get them to kind of... Well, hopefully leave us alone. And then we'll charge chariots out of there. You guys, get over here. Oh, shoot. And tell them to use fire ammo. Did I tell you guys to fire it well? I did. Okay. okay. We lost one of the chariots. That's unfortunate. Come on, guys. Get over here. Get over here. Oh, shoot. They're throwing... They're throwing axes at us. Run! <laughs> okay. Just form up over here, please. You guys kind of form up over here. What I think I'm going to do is just shift these guys over a little early, because I think those units are going to come at us from this side, so we might as well do that now. Oops, don't, don't actually move from your position. You guys, stop firing. In fact, we're going to turn on your skirmish mode, since that does actually seem to be useful. You know, I never used to use skirmish mode, but now I think that was kind of a mistake. I should probably have been using it from the start. Hey. Let's get a chariot unit over here. Actually, let's get... Um, yeah, one chariot unit over there should be fine. Fire at those guys over there. Okay, let's get the chariots out there to get amongst the war smiths. We might even have one of these units just charge in there right now. Uh, chariots, don't, don't go over there. Okay, catapults, you may stop firing. Let the chariots catch them so that the infantry can fight them. Actually, you know what? Let's have the infantry come back, because it looks like they're kind of getting away. Alright. Archers, get over here. In fact, we'll have this unit kind of pull forward to screen that side. Archers, all of you actually, get over here. All right, chariots, get back over here. They've done their job of getting in amongst our enemies and causing issues. Let's get over there. Units, units, 
Okay. Oh, those guys are firing at us now. Great! I guess I should have kept this chariot unit over here. You guys charge them. Cavalry, get out over here. Hey, catapults. Stop firing. Chariots, get over here and attack those warsmiths. No, no, cavalry, get out of there. Hold you guys to attack. Oh, whoa, whoa, what are you guys doing out there? Get over here. Need you to screen the archers. All right, you guys, charge these miners. Cavalry, get over here. Fire and skirmish on that unit there. Okay, with the chariots amongst them, that should prevent them from being shot. With the archers firing on them down here, that should be fine. Alright, you guys charge that warsmith unit. Okay, charge those axemen. Let's get our mighty general, at least part of his bodyguard, committed here. guys get over here all right how many units have we got here we've got a couple let's have the war blades attack these miners from behind hey okay, archers stop firing oh you've already stopped very good you guys get in here prepare to attack them okay, these guys are all broken great Let's charge these guys here, since they are going to go for our catapults, it would seem. In fact, let's have our catapult crews let go of their catapults and just step back from the front lines, because we don't need them there anymore. Archers, get over here so I can fire in other places. Okay, these guys are starting to rout. Broken, fighting to the death. All right, well, we don't want anyone fighting to the death, so... Detach, let them go. Here, get over here and charge those miners in the rear. Okay, great. Now they're routing. So get the chariots back over here. Okay, who's that? The red dragons? All right, yeah, we'll just let the red dragons chase them down, I suppose. Oh guys are routing. Good. Get over here after some of these guys. They're withdrawing. Go ahead and charge them to get them to stop so that we can catch them. Oh, that guy's withdrawing. Here, we'll send the cavalry after the units that are farthest away, since we need someone to catch them. You guys stay after them. Cavalry after them. Is there an enemy in here? Well, there was, but he's dead now. Alright, we will have these guys fire on the vanguards as they flee. Alright, 
them out! Get after those guys. Actually, try and pass through them to get to those guys, and maybe they'll kill both of them. Where are my chariots? Oh, did you kill them all? Oh, you did. Well, I guess you guys can just kind of stay where you are then, because I don't think there's anyone else. No, I think everyone, all of our enemies are back here now. Oh, and it looks like they did manage to kill most of them. That's the pr that's one of the problems with the dwarves being so slow, is that when they rout, they don't exactly get very far. Casualties don't look too severe, except for that poor red dragon unit there, and we certainly did take a fair number of casualty casualties, but I wouldn't say a horrific amount. Oh, wait, is there still... Oh. We still have the dwarven miners who are there. They've probably been ping-ponging back and forth between various units. And there's no one else, right? No one else? No one else? Thought I saw a unit there for a moment, but nope. I'll bring the cavalry over here, too, just in case the chariots have difficulties killing them. Nope. No man can take any credit from you for the crushing of your foes. All right, I would say those casualties are pretty standard for our fights against the dwarves and the elves at this point. Well, maybe a little lower, because I think we're usually between 300 and 400, so maybe it's a little lower than normal. Ah, uh, yes, that poor red dragon unit suffered the most by far. I assume, I think they were the one on the left. I said they were fighting some of the best dwarven units for most of the battle. And yet, even so, they were fighting dwarven units, but boy, did they kill them. I mean, some of that is probably routers, but still. These two units did very well. In fact, I think they killed, oh no, no, the Wayne Riders. This unit here actually ended up killing more. Though they also sustained the heaviest casualties. Ow. Of course, that's also, to some degree, routers, I'm sure. Still excellent. Our, our chariots still did very well, despite their casualties. You see, the problem with chariots is that they can do a lot of damage, but they will take, like, pretty substantial casualties in return, and there's no way to replace them. Like, you just have to train up another unit back at Balkoth, which I think is the only settlement that can ever even train them. And they take four turns each to train, so it's like... Like, you use them, like, in one army, or at the, you know, you put them in your army at the beginning of a campaign, but then you just expect to lose them at some point and replace them with, like, other cavalry units or something, because they, they won't live <laughs> for long enough to see the end of the campaign. We did lose a single catapult, or, um, soldier manning the catapults. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but not the end of the world. All right, um, let's see. And the war bows did, you know, a decent job considering, all things considered. War blades did well. All right, anyway. Um, oh, actually, let's take a look at these guys really quick. See, their, their casualties are kind of all over the place. I mean, this dwarven minor unit, surprisingly, did the most. But, like, it's not substantially higher than, than every, anyone else, just a bit. See, where are the... There were a couple of... Alright, here's the Axemen. Okay, they, they did not kill the most. Not even close. What about... Didn't they have a Vanguard unit? Yes, they did, right here. Okay, and they killed the second most. Hmm. Alright, well, anyway. I guess uh, let's take this back to the campaign map. Alright, so it has swung around back to my turn. I do not see substantially more elves moving into position. Unless they're hiding in the trees, which admittedly they could be. This stupid unit of elves is still preventing my spy from getting in there to see what's going on. And we can't go any further from this direction either. Grrr. You dare impede the passage of the agents of Sauron the Great? Alright, well, anyway. They will, they will get their just desserts in time. So, 
As I said, Gizlik stepped off the bridge here just to lure in one of the armies, which is what happened, and it looks like we've crushed them. Oh, um, I was expecting maybe a message that said enemy army routed or something, but it looks like I failed the council mission instead. Oh, well. Anyway, let's talk about the campaign map otherwise, because we've got Golgo, the legend, who is moving up through the mountains here to try to get to Azan... Doom. He's trying to get to Doom. Now, there's still three armies of dwarves here, and you see, this is why I was trying to lure their armies into attacking me, is because Golgo is going to pass within their, their range, if you will. And I don't want them attacking him, at least not until after he's taken a Zan... Zanol... Doom. Doom. So I'm going to have to very carefully move him through here, and hopefully they'll stay where they are, and so we can just kind of, like, pass through the province in one turn, and then they'll maybe just leave us alone? Maybe? Possibly? We'll see. I might even just grab some of these units here and send them around so that he has units that can actually sit in the settlement and act as the garrison so that he can leave. Yes, this is just Amlok who's bringing... Extra troops from the homeland, mostly mercenaries and some slave units. Actually, entirely mercenaries and slave units. Um, let me see, we already talked about Gizlik. Alright, so now we've substantially reduced Imlok's and Saliadus's forces. I mean, he has almost the same number of troops he had before, but that's because I took all the slave units who were standing outside of these settlements and just stuffed them in there. But basically... Um, I've been sending troops over to the west to replenish what used to be Ulysil's army. Now it's Goglis's army. No, not Ulysil. Anyone but Ulysil. Oh, there was something that I was going to do. Something I thought about doing. Okay, here we go. We're actually going to rename Lake Town. I hope this is spelled correctly. I'll have to check it later. Renaming it to Esgoroth. Just because I like the name better. I believe... I don't know if the new lake town is technically known as Esgaroth. I'm pretty sure the old lake town, the one that Smog burned down in The Hobbit, was known as Esgaroth, in addition to being known as Lake Town. And so then they rebuilt it, but I'm not sure, like... I'm pretty sure it kept the same name, so like, I'm pretty sure it's still called Lake Town or Esgaroth, depending on who you ask. But I guess it doesn't matter, because in this version of reality, it is now known as Esgaroth, because I just like the name better than Lake Town. Now... The other thing we are going to do is we are going to rename Dale. And you might be wondering why. That's a perfectly, you know, easy name to pronounce. We're going to name it Ulysil. Or at least, oh, I'll have to check now the spelling of that too to make sure that's how his name was spelled. In honor of our fallen general. It will no longer be known as Dale. All right, but anyway, um... What did I even come over here to talk about? Oh yes, we were depleting our backup armies to send them west, many of the troops west, to replenish now Goglis's army. We have moved some troops around already. I basically threw all the cavalry over to Olworth and had him merge them into his units. So he's got all of the cavalry right now, but the reason I did that is because we had, I'm um, in Saludus's army, we actually had... I think it was, yes, four units of Variags here. So they will just come over here and they will now be the cavalry for Goglis' army. But one of them is sadly depleted. Also, I will probably have them retrain here at Esgaroth to basically just get um, gold quality weaponry since it looks like the elves aren't approaching yet. But they could be hidden. They could be hidden right over here and I just don't see them yet. My ear. Yet. <laughs> and I can't because... Can't get my... Alright, here, if I bring my spy over here... Can, no, not really. I was hoping maybe he could see over here. I imagine if I sent him over here, it would be kind of the same thing. But anyway, we have those um, Variags. We have also all of the cell swords that were in Northwatch, basically heading west to get retrained and to join the forces over here as well. Along with these cell swords, who were in Grasgard... Along with these Warblades, who were in Grasgard, though we're sending them to Ulysil. Uh, because we've depleted some of his units by sending them south here. That's these guys here. Basically, I took his sellsword units and his and a couple of his archer units to replenish this army here. And yes, I used I used up my precious, precious 
clansmen archers. I actually took them out of that army to bring them over here. Now we can actually train clansmen archers here in Esgaroth and in Ulisil. So I'm actually training up a couple of units there since we seem to be running low on archers just in general. I may even give those clansmen archers back to Ulworth once we've trained up a couple of new ones just so that we can have all of the troops staying together. These are, you know, our elite clansmen archers, the ones which have been with us from the beginning of the game or the campaign. So yes, we just have a whole bunch of units just kind of running every which way. But basically the idea is, is we need to replenish Goglas's army. We need to kind of actually replenish Olworth's army now too, because he's running a little low on units. Like even the ones he's got, they're all damaged in some way, except for the archers, because we can retrain them. And so that's the goal, but it does mean we're depleting Imlocks and Saludas' armies. Um, but I guess we'll use them hopefully to support Gigliz, or Gigliz, Gizlik and Golgo's armies as they head north. So you'll see the final result once I've kind of merged them up and retrained everyone. Another thing to quickly talk about is uh, the new army we're training. Because I decided, you know, our income is actually quite good now. Troops are getting beaten up pretty badly up here and we're relying very heavily on mercenaries. Which is fine. I always rely heavily on mercenaries where possible. But I've decided it's time to train up a new army, and I've scattered basically different units across all of these settlements to train up a new army. So as I just click through them, you can see it's basically going to be the same as Gizlik's army. Except for I'm not going to use chariots this time. I actually am just going to have him have four units of like the scout cavalry. I still cannot train any higher units of cavalry, even though, like, they will be available eventually. Let's see. Yes, the Crimson Riders. I still can't get them yet, so we, we can't have them, unfortunately. Oh, we also have that Rebel group to take care of. I almost forgot about them. You'll soon wish that I had forgotten about you. It's another Giznog! <laughs> it's Captain Giznog! Ah, uh, oh dear. All right, but anyway, that's it. That's all that's happening throughout the Empire here, and I don't think I don't think there's even going to be any battles this turn. So, I guess I will just let you guys go, and I will bring you back as the war continues. All right, welcome back to the war. So we don't have much to discuss on the campaign map throughout most of the Empire. We do have some units from the new army starting to move to Esgaroth, which is where they're going to just kind of congregate until they're all there and can form a full new army. Over here in the east, I've been having Golgo, the legend, stand over here and try to bait them into attacking him, which they came close at one point. They actually stood an army right here, which blocked me from going any further, but didn't actually, they didn't actually attack Golgo, unfortunately. So what I'm hoping is, is that they'll just kind of stay where they are now. And Golgo could possibly just try and run away, or run past them, I should say. To get to Doom. Because uh, you see, this army can go there, which is as far as his own range is. So, you know, we could fight them if they attack him. But that would be fine. This army is the one I'm a little more worried about, but I don't know where they're necessarily going. Of course, all of these armies can move, so I don't know. There's not much point in really planning when I don't know where they're going to move. I do have Gizlik also standing within range of a couple of their armies. Again, just trying to bait them into attacking him again. Uh, the backup armies that were at Northwatch and Grasgard are gone now. Uh, basically, they're either here on the bridge with Umrath... Or they're here in Angorodin getting retrained with better quality armor. Well, probably weapons, actually. So they'll merge into one big backup army here on the bridge once they're done with that. Of course, Golgo has his own backup troops back here in the form of Kimok. And I guess this large garrison here, which... Even with this large garrison, it's not keeping public order in line. An unrest should come down... And again, culture penalties should come down over time, but it, it's taking a long time and taking a lot of troops to Orders? keep them there. And yes, that does mean he now has some Variag troops, too, to back him up if needed. 
All right, but now moving a little to the south and east here. Uh, the elves don't seem to be interested in fighting again. I mean, this army might. They keep just kind of going north and south, north and south here without actually really heading towards us. This force obviously is still standing there. Well, I say force. This one unit that we scared away from the bridge that one time hasn't moved. But that's basically it. So it looks like we've stopped the elves, at least for now, from attacking us, which is great. Oh, and really quickly, um, it turns out I actually thought that all of the evil factions were basically under one big super faction since I could, like, see their territory and everything. But uh, it turns out not so much. Um... I don't actually have military access in the Orc Rabble's lands, so I've actually received council missions telling me to well, basically get out. Actually, where are the missions again? There they are. All right, yes, I, I need to leave, or the or the Kaster, or Quaster? Kaster? will investigate your faction for financial irregularities. I think that's actually the second time I got that mission, because I did get a miss message saying that a, message, a mission like that was complete, and so I must have gotten it at first when I was passing through, like, this territory over here. The problem is, is that Kimok is not exactly within two turns of leaving their borders, especially since they were blocking him from going backwards this way. So I might have him try and hide in the trees in the, the Elven's, Elven province over here, but I don't know how well that's going to work out. I guess we'll see. All right, now let's talk about these armies here. First off, Giznog is actually now the commander and not Gogliz. I swear he only had one command star at one point, and maybe he was wounded or something, but he somehow got his command stars up to three. Again, so I assume like he had some kind of bad trait that he then lost. So now he's the commander of the army. Um, they're not really doing anything other than standing on the bridge there at the moment. We have a lot of sellsword units now. I mean, we did before, but we have even more now. Apparently, the region replenished, and so Uldor was able to hire many, many, many sellswords to send north. And of course, we also stole most of them from the backup armies that were over here. In fact, did we steal all of them? Yes, we did. There are no sellsword units uh, to the east. So every sellsword unit we have is either at Esgaroth, Ulysil, or on the army here on the bridge, or actually an Olworth's army here, too. Because here's the thing, I've basically gathered this army for Olworth. It's the Variac horse archers, a whole bunch of sacrificial sellsword units, his archers, plus that new archer unit that we trained up, and the catapults. And what we're going to do... Oh, and, um... Magarin, or Magarin, one of the generals from Esgaroth. And what I want to do is basically start depleting the garrison of Erebor. Basically do to them what we did to the dwarves at Ranavast and Burwidu. Basically we attack, do as much damage as we can, and then retreat. Now the only problem with doing that in this case is that there's actually another dwarven force here, as you can see. So I, I think that they'll actually be part of the battle. Now what I'm hoping is that... They won't actually participate. Like, they'll basically kind of run into the into the settlement, but they won't actually, like, try and attack us. Or at least that's what I hope will happen. I guess we could always just retreat if it looks like they're coming around to attack us. This will also give us a chance to look at the battle map. Like, I don't know if Erebor has any kind of special or unique battle map, but I guess we're about to find out. All right, and it looks like that's it. Oh, other than showing you the garrison, but I guess you'll see it here in a moment. Whoops. That's what I meant. Oh, hey, we're actually not bringing in the, those other troops as reinforcements. Well, I guess it is a little strange, like the way this settlement is set up, so maybe they just can't come from that side. But okay, that's interesting. So here is the ever-so-tough-looking garrison. I mean, it's larger than some of the garrisons we fought, but definitely smaller than, like, say, the ones at Ranavast and Burwidu. The problem is quality. There are no miners here. The, I think the weakest unit is probably the vanguards, but then we have all these halberdiers. We have that one unit of dragon slayers. That's probably the biggest dwarven bodyguard I've ever seen. 
And as you can see, he's got some good stats here, too. So, yeah. We're definitely going to need to fire every arrow, throw every catapult shot at them. And I guess depending on what happens, we may end up sacrificing some of our spearmen. But any anyway, our brave, brave mercenaries will lead the way in, in taking out the dwarves. So, let's just get right into the battle. All right, welcome to the battle. A very confusing battle it is, because, uh... <laughs> First off, it does have a special battle map, but we seem to be able to attack the mountain. Like, I've actually got the catapults targeting the literal mountain. I have no idea how that works, I'm, if I'm being honest. Like, is the whole mountain about to collapse on their heads? I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Um, that would make it pretty easy to take Erebor, though. As you can see, it does have a very unique battle map, though. So we've got the, the inside here. Um, I, I'm hoping we can somehow fire on the enemy once, like, the mountain is quote-unquote destroyed, because, um, if, if this actually blocks catapult shots, then we're in trouble, because there's, there's no way we would be able to actually fight the dwarves in a nice fair fight like that. It's about to come down. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, the whole mountain is coming down! Oh, well, actually, not the whole mountain, but, um, a lot of it, I suppose. Oh, hey, is that what these are supposed to be now? This is, like, holes you can throw catapult shot through. Okay. Okay. That's not so bad, then. Um, there is also no other way to attack the mountain. If you go around like so, you can see there's no other way to, to go in, so... Yeah, all right, well, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and push our lines forward then. Um, how close do you think we should be? I guess maybe here? Infantry units. Well, it looks like we can go that close, so why not? We will get our archers over here and our cavalry archers over this side. I bet you this does actually block catapult shot, though. Like, if you hit, like, this bit here, for example. Yes, All right, and it looks like our catapults should... Yeah, by the time they reach their position, we should be able to throw shot right through this hole directly in here. Wow, look at those dragon slayers. Holy smokes! They look like they could chop their way right through my guys. Same with the vanguards here. Well, actually, I was going to say stab instead of chop, but no, they've got a little choppy end on that too, in addition to a stabby end. We have the vanguards looking quite ferocious as ever, and I assume... Wait, where? I assume the old guard looks the same as ever too, but where exactly are they? Well, hold on. Before we... Before we waste too much time doing that, let's just wait for these guys to push forward here. Switch to fire. Then we'll target, let's say, this unit of halberdiers right here. Right now, where is the old guard? It was a particularly big unit of old guard, too, so it's not like it shouldn't be hiding anywhere. And guards. Back and oh, wait. Oh, wow. That worked quite nicely. Dane? Oh, oh! <laughs> I was staring at them the whole time. Dane's bodyguard is specifically Dragon Slayers. They're not Old Guard. Oh, wait. There was also a separate unit of Dragon Slayers, I think. So, where did they go? Oh, I guess they could be anywhere. They could be up here. All right, but anyway, it looks like we're going to be sitting here bombarding for a bit. I'm actually very curious as to how effective this would really be. I mean, obviously, we are hitting them. We'll find out how many of them we kill and whether we can charge in at all. 
And I'm looking at these guys, and it's like, my archers aren't going to, like, be of any use at all, are they? Like, yes, I can fire my arrows at them, but we all know that it's just going to glance right off of their armor. Oh, stop. I just realized my catapults were moving. Switch to guard mode, and then target... Oh. Okay, well, you know what? Go ahead and push forward until you can fire on Dane's bodyguard here. Because if we could kill Dane, that would mean his bodyguard would be done for, which is nice. Wait a minute, how far are you guys pushing forward here? Why can't we target any of them? I mean, we can target these vanguards here, but we're well within range of the other units here, so we should be able to fire on them. Yes. Here, let's just send one unit forward to fire on the dragon slayers, and let's see where they stop, or indeed if they stop. I guess we'll speed things up just a bit, too. Oh, dear. Units. Catapults, turn around, Units. get back out here. Units. I can see those vanguards are coming out here. Also, it doesn't seem like we can actually fire on them anyways, except for the vanguards for some reason. Oh, wait. Now we can fire... Now we can fire on the halberdiers. Yeah, all of them can. That's weird. That wasn't happening a minute ago. Yes, great lord. Okay, well, start firing on Units, the halberdiers again. Attack, Let's see, did you also make it back? Okay, yes, you did. All right, so guard mode, fire on the halberdiers. Whoops. We're on the vanguard. Oh, wait a minute. Now we can't target them anymore, even though it doesn't look like they've moved. All right, you know what? We're just going to tell these guys to, everyone use fire, everyone go into guard mode in case I tell them to target someone later. Fire at will. I just realized, um, that's actually probably a bad idea. I should tell them to fire... Okay, now they can target the halberdiers again. I don't know why. It's the halberdiers, I don't think have even moved. It's kind of weird that these dwarves are able to, like, step out here. Like, individually like this. <laughs> Catapults are not firing again. I swear the halberdiers have not moved. Well, actually, I guess some of the halberdiers are moving. And now we can target... We can target the Dragon Slayers for some reason. Okay, well, I guess go ahead and fire at them then. None of my archers are opening fire on these guys, presumably because they're not all, like, outside of the settlement yet. All right, you know what? Let's let's try and bring the archers, or at least the horse archers, in a little close. Wait, seriously, there we go. Maybe we can have them open fire. Oh shoot! Um, pull back, pull back. All right, you know what we're going to do then? Let's have our mighty general, or one of our mighty generals, anyways. What we're going to do is we're going to have him stick his unit like that, and we'll have... We'll do, we'll do that over here as well. Just because we're going to lose some of our sellsword spearmen to these, like, one, two little vanguard... Well, I'm not going to say units, just the one or two vanguards that are stepping forward here. So I'd rather the general's bodyguards kind of help them out there.
All right, and I can't help but notice that our catapults have stopped firing again, so go ahead and fire on the halberdiers again. But at least they look like they're all kind of together as one unit. And I see some of them are moving around, but I guess not too many of them. Mighty General. Um, let's see, where is our mighty general? Please tell me. Okay, yes, he's back there. And this general's bodyguard is not actually engaged, so that's fine. <laughs> this this battle is not really going according to plan. I actually wouldn't mind if, like, a couple of the Dwarven units did just kind of step out here to fight us. Though, probably not all of them. That would actually be pretty bad. Alright, let's, let's form up the cavalry again, since... I guess there's not a whole lot for us to do with them. Vanguards say victory is a distinct possibility against a general's bodyguard. I don't like the sound of that. And the catapults have stopped firing again. Come on, the unit hasn't moved. I mean, a, a few individual members have moved, I suppose. If we try targeting these guys. Wait. Oh, we can't target. Oh, wait, now we can target them. thing is, is that I don't think we can hit them through there. Oh, hey, maybe we could target a building and then hope that stray shots hit some of these guys. Wait a minute. 99. Oh, are there actually two units of halberdiers here? One of which is moving and the other isn't. Mighty General. All right, Mighty General has driven the dwarves away. So let's form back up over here. I'm gonna stretch his bodyguard out nice and far. Like that. There we go. And then we'll do something similar on this side. That'll help guard our spearmen. I see halberdiers coming out here too. Oh, they're actually retreating. I right, just target the vanguards, I suppose. I, I think this unit is the one that's not actually half charging out there, so it's probably fine. <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. Just a little bit. I mean, we have killed some of them, but to be honest, this, this is going to be a real pain coming back time and again to try and kill these guys. Oh, yes, excellent. Oh, and they're not moving. That's even better. So hopefully that means we can use up all of our ammo on them. Come on, walk right over to the general's bodyguard and then we'll kill some more of you. Oh, uh, you know what? I was going to put them in guard mode, but I'll just have them stay there. All right, let me guess. Oh, wait. I can still fire at them. So why did you stop? All right, you know what? Just get out of guard mode and just fire on those vanguards no matter what. And then we'll see if the catapults start moving or not. All right, I see a mighty general over there, and I see one over there. So that's perfect. You can just pick off some of these guys as the catapults move from their position. You know what? That was a mistake. You guys get back over here. Because, <laughs> I mean, I have no idea how far they have to move forward, because it says they're within range. Like, the, the cone, I mean, shows them as being within range, but somehow they're not. You know what? Let's try and also bring... Units. I have no idea how effective this is going to be. Okay, why can't I stretch them out anymore? Okay, I guess 
just come right over here. Okay, we do have some shots on them. So I don't know. Are you guys going to hit... Okay, well, never mind. They're actually not shooting anymore anyways. Here. Get, get in front of the units like that. You know, if we can just kill them bit by bit like this, this might actually kind of work. I say kind of. Obviously, we wouldn't have enough time to kill them all. Again, I don't I'm not sure. I don't think the archers are going to be helping very much. In fact, um you guys are firing into into our general's bodyguards too. So let's let's just not. Um let's also not have the cavalry archers fire. All right, well, I guess, to be honest, this is probably just going to be the rest of the battle. Me trying to hit some of their guys with catapult fire, our general's bodyguards chopping their way through at least a couple of their units. But um, I don't anticipate anything else really happening in the battle now, so I'll probably just let you guys go, and then I'll bring you back as the battle continue. Well, I'll bring you back basically one at the, the end of battle screen. Stop, go to guard mode, and get back in position again. All right, I'll, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, welcome back to the battle. A little bit earlier, um, the battle is nearly over. Um, we did fire, actually managed to fire every catapult shot we had, so that was great. So I told the catapult crews and most of the infantry, actually all of the infantry, to leave. Uh, especially since the dwarves seem to start pouring out in strength. <laughs> So I just have my archers basically are the only ones facing them now, and they're fighting a, a basically a, a back and forth retreat here, just killing as many as they can before they fully flee. Basically covering the retreat of the rest of our troops. The only ones I'm really worried about, to be honest, are the general's bodyguards, since they were fighting for quite a while. They're probably just a tad tired. Oh, no, no. You know what? Keep coming back here, guys. Honestly, I'm not even really sure how many of the dwarves we've actually killed. I mean, there's a bunch of corpses, obviously, around here. And in there, but, like... I don't know. I don't feel like we've actually killed very many of them. And even with all of this archer fire going down on their heads, I don't think we're, we're killing very many of them. Yes, I do have them in skirmish mode, but I'm pulling them back manually just because I don't trust them fully to do it themselves. Also, I'm a little concerned that they might get tired and then, like, the dwarves will actually catch them. You see, they're already winded. I mean, we're both winded, but we haven't been running nearly as much as they have, and yet they seem to be able to, uh, to get up to us quite quickly. Right here, we'll have the infantry archers just stand all the way back there. They can fire maybe a couple of shots, and then I'll just tell them to withdraw as well. Actually, here, you know what? I'm going to have the cavalry get behind the halberdiers here. Because I assume shooting them in the back might be a little better. Oh, we've basically eliminated that unit. In fact, here, I'm going to pull off the much smaller unit here because they've actually used up their ammo. Go and kill that one dwarf there, please.
All right, you guys withdraw. I withdraw, I mean turn around and leave. Come on, leave. What? Okay, seriously, what are you doing? Of course they would do something like this. Okay, just go, go backwards. Withdraw. Well, why are you going over here? That's not off the battlefield. Off the battlefield is right here. Over here. Over here. Oh, dear Lord. I should have known that they would do something stupid like that. Like, literally, just turn around and go off the battlefield. Why was that a difficult command for you to follow? Also, why aren't you... Oh, skirmish mode. Is that really what it was? Skirmish mode was preventing them from leaving? Pisses me off so much. Surely withdrawing would override skirmish mode. Alright, well, skirmish mode is turned off on all these guys, right? Alright, looks like it. Go ahead and withdraw. Um, except for those two units, because they're going to pass right through dwarves. Um, guys, get out of here. Withdraw. I mean, I know we can replenish them, but that still pisses me off, because they should have just walked right off the battlefield. I literally had them standing on the red line, so that they could just turn around and leave. And these idiots here still aren't... Oh, hey, they killed a halberdier! Nice work. <laughs> Seriously, they're just gonna, like, bounce off of them for the remaining, like, 13 minutes or whatever. Oh, they just killed another one! Okay, you know what? We're gonna speed this up here. Oh. Okay, well, <laughs> I thought they might kill a couple more of them, but nope. They've got away. Defeat is a bitter taste. Made all the worst when it is clearly a defeat. Well, to be honest, they shouldn't have killed any of my guys except for a few of the bodyguards, but of course they managed to kill a bunch of the archers because they're idiots who don't obey orders. All right, but we actually did kill a decent number of... Well, I don't know if that's a decent number. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm, once again, I'm looking at the wrong column, as happens all the time, it would seem. All right, but yes, we actually killed a good number of them. They might replenish or something in the meantime, and I'm going to have to replenish my archers, because of course I have to. But still, we did kill a fair number of them, so let's take this back to the... Oh, actually, really quickly. Yeah, actually, the horse archers did pretty well. I mean, they almost killed as many as the general's bodyguards themselves, and they were the ones who actually were fighting most of the time. Catapults did all right. Well, I guess this unit did. The other three units, not at all. And then, of course, this stupid clansman archer unit suffered some casualties. All right, but anyway, now we can leave. Whoa, where are you going? That's not at all where I, I thought he was going to retreat to. I thought he would retreat back towards Ulysil. Like, wait, did he? Did he, like, go across, like, through Ulysil, across the bridge, and then all the way over here? <laughs> That's kind of funny. These troops are quite all over the place, so I guess I'll have to readjust this. All right, but anyway, um, that was it for now, so I will let you guys go, and I will bring you back as the war continues.